Lesson six, this comes in after the mark of the beast has been implemented. There are two different groups now in the world, those that have taken the mark and those that have not. And uh, not everybody that doesn't take the mark will be, be killed. There'll be some left over at, after the tribulation that were able to make it through. But for the most part, a lot of people are going to be condemned to death because they won't take the mark of the beast. And uh, we get a picture of that here in this Revelation chapter 14. It says, Where will the Lamb stand with the 144,000? Mount Zion. It's, a, it's Zion all the way through the Old Testament. And there's one place about Mount Zion with an S. Very interesting. It gets very deep. Um, the Bible is perfect. It has no mistakes in it. But one time it talks, it spells Zion with an S. And it's foreshadowing a spiritual Zion that's later. It's an amazing thing what God has done there. It's a spiritual place. And that's what this is talking about. I, I know it's New Testament and Zion is spelt with an S. But the New Testament Jerusalem is a picture of the new Jerusalem that's going to come down to the earth one day. So we have the Old Testament Jerusalem that was all about laws, and uh, they killed the prophets there because the prophets would prophesy against their, the way they kept the laws. And, and then the New Testament Jerusalem still had that in it. But with the revealed Bible... And the New Testament that we have, even though Jerusalem, all during that New Testament period, was in the transgression, it's a, it's a type of this new city that's coming because the new way came to Jerusalem. Does that make sense? The, the gospel came to Jerusalem. And that's what it was. The gospel, the church was born out of even though that was a wicked city, we were born out of it. And so the New Testament Jerusalem is a type of the Jerusalem that's going to come down at the Revelation at the Revelation chapter 19 and chapter 20. This new Jerusalem that Jesus is building for us right now. At it's, it's got 144 written all over it. When we get there, you'll see how the gates are and the walls are 144 cubits high. It has 144,000 people that... This, that's what this is in number one right now. This 144,000, that's a, that's a symbolism of the, the people that are going to be there and inhabiting that place. They'll be with the Lamb forever. And that word Jerusalem is in the, the whole Bible like 600. And, but in the New Testament, it's in there 144 times in your King James Bible. It's perfect. That's what this is talking about, this Mount Zion. This is a spiritual place that these people are going to be. There's some contention on who these people are. Uh, the Bible clearly states that there are 12,000 from each tribe of Israel that are in, and I just take that as it, as it says it. They're going to be the first Jews that their eyes are open during that tribulation because Jews are in blindness right now. These are a type of first fruits of that tribulation period. They'll be the first Jews to receive their Messiah. And here they are in this spiritual place with Christ after all the stuff has taken place and uh, the mark of the beast is given. And then ver number two says, These are they which were not with women, for they are... And so... A lot of people try to put us in this group. 
that this is just a symbolic number and this is just the church. We've all been defiled, haven't we? We've all been defiled and then had to be reborn, rebirthed. And we've had, this said that they never had any guile in their mouth. Now, I wish I could say I never had any guile in my mouth, but I have deceived people before in my life. So I, I would not dare put myself in this position. This is, there's something different going on here with these. These are, these are special people that are born out of a tribulation period. You know, when, uh, if we know that, knew that Jesus was going to come back in five minutes, that'd be the cleanest five minutes you ever lived in your life, wouldn't it? You see how it will be easy for them to not be defiled with women and have no guile in their mouth? The same way it would be for you if you knew Jesus was coming to your house tonight for dinner. You're going to have every offensive thing. If there's any DVDs there that you don't think Jesus would like, they'd be go out the window. If there's anything in there that you think he would not like, it would be gone before he got there, right? That's, that's the picture that it's given us here. And really, it, it should be a, a, a boost to do that anyway. That kingdom that we're supposed to be doing all the time, we're supposed to be pressing into that. When it's revealed to us something that is not good for the kingdom of God, we get it out of our life. Or we just put it over there for a minute and... <laughs> Pick it back up after the sermon's over. We all do that. It, it takes time. And it, it takes all of us being patient with each other. And uh, man, that's how you get the forgivenesses in your life. Though you have these little pet things that just really hard to, to get rid of. If you're forgiving other people like you should, then you're going to get forgiveness for that. But these were, no guile was in their mouth. They were in the midst of all this tribulation. There was no problem with staying pure. When they see Jesus, when they see their Messiah, him, their ancestors rejected them back when he came the first time, they have nothing but utter remorse for that. They live a complete and total life of repentance and they try to make up for it, you know. We get this idea, well, God saved us and He loves us just the way we are, so there's no reason to have any gratitude for Him. There's no reason to ever try to chiv in this forgiveness. And that's awesome to do, but we've got to be forgiving also. We've got to be like Christ was to us. Don't hold anything against anybody because the Bible says when we do, It'll be held against us. Any wrongdoing that we've got in our life, it will be held against us if we hold something against somebody else. It's very clear. Okay. No guile. And then it says, What will be preached unto them that dwell on the earth? The everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel. Does anybody know what that is? The everlasting gospel. Love. It's love. Yep. And uh, I mean, it's it's put here. It tells us what it is. But that's the whole. That's the mountaintop of it. That's every book that we've went through on Sunday morning. It all comes back to the same thing. Every book of the Bible is putting this. It's like a. You see a pyramid with the eye on the top on your dollar bill? You know, every book of the Bible is pointing at for us to climb, to grow up in the Lord and reach that top pinnacle up there. And that's when you're close to God, see? And you're at the top. Uh, sorry to use that pyramid on the dollar because I know it has a lot of conspiracy things attached to it, but it's what I think of. Because when I was a kid, I was told that was God's eye watching over us 
as an innocent kid. And so all the way growing up till I got older, I that's what I thought of when I saw that pyramid on the back of a dollar bill. <clears throat> Innocence. And then verse 5, it tells you what the everlasting gospel is, but it's, it's summing it up and give to him for the hour of his is come. This is fear God and give glory to him. How do you give glory to God? By doing what he says, keeping his commandments to love one another, to not hold anything against anybody, to walk with him in mercy. That's all giving him glory. When we stiff arm anything like we can be think that we're right with God a whole bunch and then being prideful out in the world with people we work with and we're not giving gl glory to God. We're giving glory to us. This is where it's all at. You'll see more people conform to the way that you are if you're not trying to conform them into that. You are trying to do that in your mind. You want to. But the way that you conform them, the way that people want to be like you, is from being like Christ. That's why the multitudes flocked to Him. Number uh, six, what will the angels say of Babylon? fallen because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication <clears throat> mystery Babylon is a uh, it's the the harlot it's the Jewish nation that that turned their back on God Way back there. They, they rule things from behind the scenes. They're, they're in every nation. They, uh, they control money. This is no secret. This is you, anywhere that has anything, any kind of a, a, a big company, a big nation that, that has uh, a lot to do with our economy. It's all ran by Jews. And we're not supposed to hate them. We're not. We're to long for them to be back in the fold. They're blinded for now so that we could have eyes to see. But just like Ruth was good to her mother-in-law, we're to be good to the Jewish nation. We should take extra care of the Jews Israel, or anything like that but individual Jews were to take extra care to be nice to them because it is our, the generosity that God has shown us as Gentiles that's supposed to draw them back in. Remember learning about that? Provoke them to jealousy, God says. <clears throat> But Babylon is fallen, is fallen. This will be this group that is all over the world. This is what causes problems everywhere. Satan is that they, I'm leaving God because he didn't do what we wanted. He didn't save our nation like he was supposed to. They went to Satan. And Satan has been pulling their strings ever since. And this is what's what Babylon is, and she is going to fall. There'll be no more uh, shadow government working behind the scenes causing all these things to happen. All the junk we see in our schools today with the kids being taught they can be boy or girl, or, this is thing to break down the fabric of our society. This is what they do. They've tried it many times. Every time a nation comes together that exalts God, you have Babylon right there next to it doing everything it can to bring it down through iniquity, 
Getting people built up in pride and be more about their nation than they are about their oppressed. Be more about the nation and filling their pockets than they are helping the sick, the poor, the needy. Same thing's happening in America today. There is a pride that is so big right now in America. Christians are fighting like I've never seen before over politics. Number seven. Who? Yeah. Any man who worships the beast and his image. So this beast is going to give them those things. It's going to give them their nation, their patriotism. It's going to give them that and line their pockets. They'll, they'll continue to be able to be rich. Just take this mark. Number eight, who will be the blessed here? The dead which die in the Lord henceforth. So there's, this is a defining moment. When this takes place here, this is when all heck is going to break loose. The wrath of God is going to fall on... It's not the beast doing it now. Now it's God cleansing the earth. From this point forward, He is cleansing the earth so that we have a place to come back to when we come back. So He said, all those that die from henceforth, all those that don't take the mark and they are beheaded or tortured or however the beast system does it, they are blessed. Because once you're dead, you don't have to endure anymore. No more tribulation. No more times of, hey, if you'll just denounce Christ, there'll be no more pain. I won't hurt you anymore. It's that moment that you're dead. You're freed from any of that. So he says, blessed henceforth. Number nine, that they may rest from their and their do follow them. That means when their works do follow them, that means they will be judged accordingly. We have this setting in the heavenly places all the time where God says, I will judge you according to the works of your hands. Not, not for salvation. We've made that decision. But now this, there's this eternal kingdom that's coming. And the way that we lived this Christian life determines where we're at in that kingdom. Determines what we do in that kingdom. Now you may say, I don't care about none of that. And uh, the Bible will clearly tell us you better make sure you're in the faith if that's the way you think. You better make sure that you got saved for the right reason in the first place. That you actually believed because when Jesus Christ comes into a person, we're given His nature. And there should be an unction then to do something for Him. And we all have different things that we do, different unctions, but there will be... So then uh, number 10 says, what will the one sitting on the white cloud have in His hand? A sharp sickle. This is what they use at harvest time to cut down the wheat or whatever it is that they're harvesting to load it up and put it into the barns. And so this, this is a, a harvesting that's going to take place right before everyone's thrown into the Valley of Armageddon. All the nations come together in the Valley of Armageddon. They're there. Let's see, where will the sickle be thrust? On the earth. And the was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. And that's exactly the length from Jerusalem to Basra. Basra. And... Uh, in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, it speaks of this day, and uh, Isaiah says, 
for the Lord. He says, I have a sacrifice in Basra. And this is the day that it's talking about because he calls for all the fowl to eat of the flesh of kings and, and captains and prideful men and, and all these things. It's coming. And number 13, who will have the seven last plagues filled up with the... I can't read it because I had a, had a child scribble all over my paper. Seven angels. That's right. Seven angels. Always sevens. That has to do with the fulfillment, the finality, then God's fingerprints are on it. Number 14, who will have the harps of God? Yeah. Those that didn't take the mark. Those that said, I won't conform. You ever, when you was a kid, did anybody ever give you that analogy or that thing to look at? I remember seeing it on cartoons when uh, somebody was being provoked to do something bad. They'd have a little devil on this shoulder and a little white angel on the other shoulder. You remember that? <laughs> and the other, the the white angel would always be carrying a little bitty harp. You remember that? <clears throat> who will have the harps of God? Oh, we already said that one. And they sing the song of Moses, the of God, and the song of the great and are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. It's a new song being sung different perspectives so it's as it were a new song it's we're supposed to be singing that song now but w at this time you know there's a new perspective uh, we can love God and and try to we can do his work here but when the day comes when there's no veil anymore and we see everything very clearly can you imagine if we could see things really clearly now if we knew what it was going to be like in heaven at this time the, the song services that we would have? Think about that. The song services seem just like they're a repetition. We're just getting through it. It's not that way for everybody, but it'll feel like that when you're doing it Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. But then one day, those songs, you're going to be paying attention to every word that you're saying. Can you imagine Jesus? Jesus standing here and you're given something to say to him. Marvelous are thy works. Everything that you did for me was marvelous. What in heaven will be opened? The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven will be opened. I got new thoughts on that. And uh, I'm going to delve into that really deep for my next revelation study. But who is the temple? That's us. That's us. And that's what it's talking about. Stay tuned. And who will receive the first vial of wrath of God? Men who receive the mark. They get a boil on them. You know there's people getting these now from taking the vaccine? They're getting these huge boils on them. I just just learned this. Just learned this. It's just their, their body makeup. That's not what this is. Their body makeup is reacting to some vaccine that's giving them these boils. Number 19, where will the second angel pour out his vial? In, in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the and of waters, and they became blood. Everything that we saw in uh, Exodus, you know, God judging Egypt, 
we see it happening here again. Because it shows, he says, I want people to know who I am. And they'll have no way to doubt it when they see all this coming to pass. What will the men scorched from the fourth vial do to the name of God? Blaspheme it. Instead of saying, okay, I don't want to know more. They just blaspheme his name because of their pain. Upon whose seat will the fifth vial of the wrath of God be poured? The burr will be dried up by the sixth vial. Euphrates. Did you know this is a thing that's going on right now? The Euphrates is almost dried up. Google it. The great Euphrates River is almost dried up. Number 24. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. That's the valley of Megiddo. That's the place where all the... What will not be found when the seventh angel pours out his vial? Mountains. That's talking about the physical mountains and this earthquake that's going to take place is going to change the whole geography of the earth. It's also talking about the kingdoms of the world through the Old Testament. And we'll see that in the next lesson. 17 is the judgment of of the great whore, mystery Babylon that reigneth over the kings of all the earth. That's what we've already mentioned. It's all the mountains, the kingdoms, and the kings over everything. They're going to fall at this time. Lord, thank you for this this morning. Help us to glean from this what we can and continue to have this unction. Lord, we don't want to seem like people that don't care. We want to seem like people that do care. Help us use this in the right way to draw people to you. Your disciples, you said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Help us lift you up in every way that we can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right.